Welcome to tonight's Level Up Ladies webinar. I am so grateful that you joined us. And you know what, tonight, like, I really love every topic that we do, but tonight with mentorship is something like, I feel like I am, I've really lived this. And um, so I'm really passionate about it. And I, I think that this is going to help all of us. So like, it's both the side of being a mentor and what I call a mentee, like the person that's receiving mentorship. But this really is a way for us to kind of fast track our like journey to go where God's called us to go. And it's through mentorship. And when you think about it, God is all about relationships, right? So he wants us to connect, of course, with him, but with each other to help us move forward forward in what God has called us to do. So what I would like all of you to do since you've uh, hopped on here tonight is to go ahead and chat. Let me know where you are tuning in from. Um, give me your name. And I just want to give you a shout out. And I know that people from all over the world, uh, we're really an international level up ladies are tuning in to learn about this topic. And if you are joining us on Instagram, I want to thank you for joining us. If you want to have a way to connect and get the PowerPoint that I'm going to be going through tonight, go ahead and uh, go to the link tree, which is going to give you access to our site for the Level Up Ladies. You can subscribe. And what we do is we send out to you um, a replay of the webinar and a copy of the PowerPoint. Like for me, when I learn something, I really like to see something in writing. I want to be able to apply it and to go forward. So we've got that for you on Instagram. Wow, I just want to welcome uh, Lorinda. Thank you, Lorinda from Dallas. I'm so grateful that you're on. We've got Shelly from Louisiana. Sally tuning in from North Carolina. Welcome. So just go ahead and enter your information as you come in. Um, we've got Rachel tuning in from Tinley Park. Rachel, thanks so much for being a part of this. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. So, oh, Kathleen from, oh, Kathleen, I'm so glad you're on from Fort Worth. Thank you. Kathleen is such an amazing person in our life, a friend and helps us with so many things. I'm so glad you're on. Susan joining us from Johannesburg. Susan, we are coming back to South Africa. I don't know if you know that, but through Wealth Builders, we're going to be coming your way in August of this year. And we just can't wait. We absolutely love South Africa. All right. I'm going to go ahead and go to the PowerPoint. And we're going to get started talking about mentorship. So we've got a little subtitle here that is Mentorship, the Way to Double Your Textbook Training. Um, and my husband Dave is on, which is amazing. <laughs> He's actually right over here. <laughs> um, and this is really true. You know, there is only so much that you and I can learn going through school or even reading a book or textbook training. But there's something about when we connect with a person that we are able to, I think it's, it's a spiritual thing as well as a natural thing. We're, we're obviously able to observe and get information, but I truly believe that there is an anointing. There's a transferring that takes place when we are with our mentors. So um, I think when we look at how can we fast track to really get to the highest level, the fastest way possible, I truly believe it's through mentorship. And I'm going to give you lots of examples of that here tonight, as long as in as well as scriptures. But also, I just want to, you know, let you know, too, if we're the person that is a mentor, um, there is a huge purpose in that. You know, we're going to go through phases of life. And when we get to that final phase, we call it the Abraham uh, phase, which may be the sage phase. Those are terms that you have heard about. There's a purpose in us to pass on what we have learned to the next generation. And so when we look at this tonight, we're going to do it from the mentor standpoint point and the mentee, because that's going to help us to know how do we function, move forward and really achieve all that God has called us to do. Hello, Donna from Louisville. It's so good to see you, Donna. I'm so glad you hopped on tonight. 
All right. So what we're going to get started with is what is the definition of a mentor? So if any of you out there, you would say, I'm actually the mentor, maybe not the mentee. Most of us are both a mentor and a mentee. I would love for you to just chat in what area are you mentoring somebody or what is your area of expertise that you just know God has just called you to pour out into somebody? So a mentor is an experienced individual who provides guidance, support, and instruction to another person, often referred to as a, a mentee, right? So we've got the mentor and the mentee. So if you are someone that is experienced um, in something, you, you have a desire to provide guidance, support, and instruction to another, you are a mentor. There's a lot of biblical examples about this too. I'm just thinking about women. Definitely, we can be a mentor in business, but sometimes we're a mentor with being a mom, right? Or a wife or a grandma, whatever that might look like. We have got so many facets that we can offer people with being a mentor. Okay, so we all know that mentorships are essential to the growth of young professionals. The evidence is clear. Listen to this. 75% of executives credit their success to mentors. And recent research shows that 90% of employees with a career mentor are happy at work. Okay, wait a minute. These are powerful statistics. So first of all, 75% of executives credit their success to mentors and the research proves it. That's huge. And then 90% of employees with a career mentor are happy at work. Do you see that this is multifaceted? So if I'm an executive or I'm someone in my field and I want to excel, the statistics show that the best thing you can do is to find a mentor. Now let's look at it from the other perspective. If I'm an employer and I want happy employees, either I want to be a mentor to them or I want to encourage encourage them to connect with mentorship. This is very important. Sometimes with, with people, entrepreneurs, we have our own businesses. It can almost be a little threatening, right? So if someone is going to seek a mentor, we want it to be us, but we don't always have capacity. But with this, if we're able to align them with somebody that can mentor them, it can really like build on their satisfaction at work. I think most people... They want to grow. They want to learn. They don't want to stay stagnant. And so this is sort of like one of those tools as an employer that we can utilize to provide a pathway for people not only to learn, which is going to help us in our business to scale our business, but also to help people to be satisfied and stay with us at our company. Um, I remember in banking, well, I was in banking. Most of you guys know this for 25 years before I ever moved to Colorado. So I had this whole series, you know, this life of decades, right, of a life before I even entered the world of Andrew Walmack Ministries or Wealth Builders. And in that time, I was really, really blessed to have um, a couple people in my life. The first one, his name is Robin Roberts. Robin is someone that I worked with at a company called Investors Bank. He hired me there. And then he hired me at the next place, which was Bayside Bank, right? And then when we got bought out by Mid-Country Bank, he was my boss there too. Well, we sat down one day and we started thinking about this. And I said, you know what, Robin? I have worked for you for 20 years. And it was at different companies but it was a really interesting history because he was a mentor and I didn't recognize it really as an official mentor, but it was that person that when he hired me, he helped me move along and grow, even though it was a couple levels up and then starting a new venture where he started a bank, they recruited me, him and Darlene, and I worked for him there. And then when we got acquired at mid country, I worked for him there. And I thought that was so interesting because Robin was a guy that, uh, you know, definitely I worked for, but I wouldn't have looked at him and, and like saw that he was like a main influence in my life. And I know that sounds kind of weird, but you can work around people 
or be with people and not necessarily realize that you're they're your mentor. You just work for them. But when I purposely look back on it, I thought, wow, 20 years I have worked for this man. And he truly had an impact in my life. So when we're looking at mentorship, he was the guy that um, I would just watch or listen to. He would encourage me. I would help him to be successful, of course. But sometimes that mentorship is very subtle and it's not formal. So my point is, is that you possibly are being mentored by somebody that you do not officially name your mentor. But if you look at your history or you look at the time that you've spent, they're absolutely your mentor. I'm going to really throw something out there, too, that's going to help a lot of you is that we can be mentored by people that we don't ever personally meet. OK, you say, Karen, how is that possible? Well, when I was like growing in the Lord, I got born again and I just really wanted to be um, the woman that God called me to be. Joyce Meyer was my mentor. Yet I never met Joyce. OK, so I want to kind of help you to see that mentorship is not limited to people that you can sit across the table with and, you know, have a cup of coffee. Mentorship is achieved when we actually listen to people, maybe we listen to podcasts, we watch their shows, we read their books. You can be mentored by somebody amazingly famous that you could never have personal access to by taking advantage of their books, their products, their material, their shows. And you can actually glean from that and be mentored through those people. And I think that really opened up a lot for me, knowing that I could never have access to a John Maxwell. Well, actually, I do kind of now, which is really interesting. But when I started reading him, I would never have dreamed to know John Maxwell. But those are things that you and I can access to start to become who God has created us to be. You know, Billy and Becky Epperhart are really my number one mentors, and I am blessed to have access to them. But it started out really just by serving them. And I wasn't even thinking like, wow, someday I want to work for them or someday, you know, I want to um, be mentored by them. It wasn't anything like that. It was finding them and saying, you know what, I really want what they have or I really want to learn from them on building wealth. This is important to me. And so we just started attending the workshops, connecting with them. Of course, I knew them through AWM. And the Lord just made a pathway for us to be connected to them. So a lot of times we don't have to have that formal mentorship in place, but we just say, let me find those people that really help me to move forward with things. And it's amazing how God will open the door for you to actually become connected with them. You know, Joyce Meyer was at Gateway Church recently uh, and um, Christine Kane was also there speaking. And it, I mean, many of you know both of those ladies. They're amazing. But Christine Kane was explaining or she was sharing that she had worked for Joyce Meyer as her chauffeur, like driving her around. And in that, you would say, my gosh, I'm sure she didn't say much to her. Um, there wasn't a lot of like ministry interaction. Christine Kane wasn't saying something like, hey, I want to become a minister. Will you teach me? But she just made herself self available and she was serving her. And Christine Kane was sharing that when she was just a chauffeur, for Joyce Meyer, how kind Joyce was to her. So I'm sharing that on two levels. When you're a mentor, you don't have to have a formal mentorship with somebody to have an impact in their life. In this case, uh, Christine Kane was serving Joyce, but Joyce was just being kind and she was being respectful. And in that, it had an, a really big impact on Christine Kane, right? And Christine, she may or may not have known what God called her to do, but when she was in the presence of Joyce Meyer, hearing her conversations, attending her conferences, 
really being the recipient of her kindness with someone that really didn't have a position that you would expect someone to maybe be kind to in that when you think about it, it mentored Christine on how to treat people that work for her when her ministry became large, right? So that's kind of how it works. All these things are extremely encouraging and exciting and not limiting in any way. So um, here's a scripture too. I love this. It's iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. You know, when we um, look at this scripture, I mean, I love it on the surface. It's like, wow, yes, iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. But when you're actually in the moment of that, can I just tell you, it doesn't always feel good. So one of my mentors back in banking, her name is Darlene. She's an amazing lady, lady, super smart. I worked with her at Investors and then at Bayside Bank and then Mid-Country Bank. She was over all of the mortgage area. And um, she's a lady that I would just tell you is not, you know, she's not super warm and fuzzy in the way that we might like, but she really spoke truth and she was very successful. And I remember one time, even though it was difficult to hear, we came out of a meeting and she just looked at me and she said, Karen, you do not always have to be right. And she actually went on to talk to me about when you're in a meeting, if you take the posture that you always have to be right, you kind of give up the ability to influence or to move things in a certain direction. So she was kind of like that iron sharpens iron. I didn't want to hear it. I didn't like hearing it. But looking back now from a more mature perspective, she spoke things into my life that I truly needed to hear. Now, if I would have heard a webinar like what I'm sharing with you tonight, I wouldn't have had that like, oh my gosh, that hurts feeling. It would have been like, wow, Lord, thank you that you have put someone in my path that's actually speaking truth to me. And what she was saying is that in a meeting, because I was so insecure, looking back on this, of course, I realized like what was going on? I was so insecure that I always had to be right. If you've been in a conversation, like you're hearing people and you're like, oh my gosh, it could make me look bad. I've got to like figure out a way to turn this around to make sure that I look right. Well, she was sharing with me that I was in a place of immaturity that I needed to overcome and realize to actually have influence. I do not always have to be right. That is the power of a mentor. And I really believe that in this, when we're looking at a scripture, iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another, that we can realize for us to grow, we kind of have to, you know what, shake off the offense, shake off the uh, sensitivity and just trust God that he's put people around us that are going to help us. Amen. So that was always a, that was a big deal for me. Once I learned that I could hear something like that and actually there was something to it I needed to listen to, it actually put me in a position that I could be mentored. But if I never want to be wrong, I'm really not someone that someone is going to be able to mentor. So let's go over the mentor roles, responsibilities and benefits. The role of a mentor is to teach, guide, and help shape the professional growth and learning of the mentee and to serve as a positive role model. Wow, that's a lot right there that we are looking at. But the role of a mentor is to teach, it's to guide, and it's to help shape professional growth and learning. Okay, so in that When we're a mentor, we definitely don't want to be someone that's going to completely discourage someone, but yet we also have to be that person that is willing to say, just like Darlene was for me, hey, you know what? You don't always have to be right. And it's actually negatively impacting your leadership. Okay. That's a true mentor. That is someone that's willing to speak truth. That's willing to help you to grow in the areas that we might not recognize And that is what, um, if we are mentoring others, we want to be a positive role model, of course, but we also want to be that voice that is able to help somebody to really overcome some of the obstacles or limitations they may not know they have. You know, I've got a teaching called Taking the Limits Off. 
And in that teaching, I have six areas that I share that can really hold us back from achieving or doing all that God has called us to be or all that he desires, right? Well, in that, if you've got a mentor that's able to actually help you to see some of those things, you're going to be able to move forward in those things. You're going to be able to overcome obstacles faster and really discard the limitations that might be in our life. We come to the table, at least I do. I won't, I don't want to speak this over you, but I'm just telling you, I came to the table in the executive boardroom in a lot of positions with a lot of baggage. Okay. And what I mean by that is there were a lot of things in my life that I had allowed to impact me in a negative way. Well, when we have like, hey, this is all I've known, this is all I've experienced, this is all I've seen. When we come into a situation like that, we're just not self-aware of what those limitations might be. But when we have a mentor that actually speaks that truth to us, we're able to step into that place God's called us to much, much faster. All right, let's go to the next one here. And it is a mentor responsibilities. Okay, so these are things if you are a mentor, if you want to be a mentor, I just want you to think about this. Mentor responsibilities include sharing information about our background, skills, and interests. You know, when we're a mentor, um, which I think I am in a few people's lives for sure, and I'm being mentored as well. If we don't share a little bit about ourselves or insights, you know, it's not going to really help people. I would love to go into a situation and just pretend like everything's perfect. I've done everything right. I've never made a mistake. But oh my gosh, that would so not be true, right? So a true mentor, I believe, is someone that is able to put aside the facade or even our reputation in some ways and be able to share that, you know, like, hey, this is what I went through. And if you just listen to me, I'm going to be help. I'm going to help you not to go through this. Or this is what I learned works. And I want to share this with you so that you can step forward into all God has called you to be. So be real and be open to sharing the things that you have learned and, the, and some of the skills and some of the interests. You know, it's a temptation, I think, for a lot of people to say, no, if I share too much, uh, you know, who's going to, I'm going to lose my value or whatever. But one thing we learn as a mentor is when we actually go forward with things, when we bring things forward to help other people, God has a way of multiplying that. And we are sowing seed into people that we will reap a return. We don't want to hang on to things too tight because God has called us with the things he's taught us to be able to pass it on to others. Okay, the second responsibility is tell the mentee how she, he or she can help. So this is really important to you. Like if you are mentoring somebody, let the person know, maybe they're your intern. Maybe it's someone that works for you. Maybe it's someone that wants to volunteer with you. Let them know honestly how they can help you. It's very helpful. Listen actively. I get really busy. I've got, you know, a phone going over here. I've got something going over here. But when you are mentoring, just like parenting, give them your attention. Or you could say this even in a marriage, give your attention to that person and listen to them. Serve as a positive role model. You know, we know all of our mistakes. I realize that we are not perfect, but if we can kind of step over that and just realize that, you know what, maybe we have some fruit that we can share with people. We want to serve as a positive role model. And it helps us too to think about, wow, if I say this, what impact does it have? If I do this, what impact does it have on people that are maybe watching me or maybe looking to me to be their mentor? Help your mentee set education and career goals. I was just talking to our amazing in-laws, Butch and Julianne Hartman, who are just right out there. They're ha we're having dinner tonight. And um, Julianne was sharing with me that, you know, they they even like they're like successful. I look at them. I was like, wow, if I could just do everything they're called to do. But they actually have a mentor, too. So every time you go into a phase of life, you reach something more. And in that, that that mentor that they have um, is pushing them to think about like, hey, well, you know, in 25 years, what do you want to say you've done? Well, that sets right in with this, like have that help that person you're mentoring Look ahead. What are some of your goals? Where do you want to be? 
and you start to help them to set goals and milestones that's going to help them achieve it. One of the things that, uh, you know, we've learned a little bit the hard way is success doesn't just like fall in your head. You actually have to be purposeful with it. And I think mentorship is one of those ways that we can really help others and help ourselves. Provide encouragement for building self-confidence and self-esteem. This is something too, when we're very driven to do things, um, it's easy to just like, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong, right? Same thing with parenting, same thing with leading. But when we are only told what we do wrong, it's very discouraging. It's like, do I do anything right? So then you can tend to give up. But when you are a mentor and you realize that God's entrusted you with people, let's take time to make sure they know what they're doing right in addition to ways to correct. And can I tell you that a pathway to having influence to maybe adjust someone's behavior or direction is to let them know that you are you are worthy, you are valuable, right? Let me impart that to you. And it opens people's hearts and it opens their minds to receive information and redirection. Offer your mentee constructive and meaningful advice and feedback. Um, it is tempting just to tell people what they want to hear. But if you are honest with them, you built a trust relationship, they really need to hear from you on things that they need to adjust or do different to move forward. Celebrate those milestones and achievements, whether it's just like a high five emoji, right? Or maybe something is accomplished and was like, you know what? We're going to order in pie today or we're going to order in Whole Foods Chantilly Lace Cake, <laughs> which is one of my favorites. You know, when we take a moment to celebrate milestones, it means so much to people. Act as a resource for information about careers. So help them connect them with people. Hey, I know someone that you might want to learn from over here. You might want to apply for a job over here. And and then educate your mentee on workplace expectations. So if you have a formal mentorship or someone's coming in to work with you, let them know how they can succeed and some things to stay away from that would, would cause them to get into a bad situation. You know, personally, we've got um, uh, something going on too where uh, we've got, you know, I've worked at a place. I know a little bit of the behind the scenes. And then we've got a family member that is working at that same place. And so instead of just letting them make a ton of mistakes and go off to the side, it's like, hey, you know what? I've been there. Let me just share a little bit with you uh, that might stop you from stepping into, you know, a, a potential you know, mine, right? <laughs> or something that could cause problems. So we really want to help people as a mentor to avoid some of those areas that we have learned or maybe stepped into a minefield ourselves. And we want to help the people that we're mentoring to, to not go through that same situation. All right. So mentee roles, responsibilities, and benefits. This is a person that's being mentored. The role of a mentee is to seek guidance and constructive feedback on his or her professional development and career goals, okay? So we want to be someone that's, you know, um, moldable, someone that is open to hearing things. We don't want to be on the defensive. You don't want to be like I was initially like, oh, no, I'm going to be right with everything because that means that I'm not someone that you can mentor, Mm -hmm. So what does that look like? A mentee, someone that's looking for a mentor, here's your responsibilities. Take responsibility for keeping in regular contact with your mentor and actively participate in the relationship. So if you have that formal mentorship or maybe you have a boss that is saying like, yeah, you know what? I'm willing to help you in this area. That mentor is busy, right? Those of you that are mentors, you know, like you're busy. It's not like you need something else to do. So if we're that person that wants to glean and learn, we need to take responsibility to stay in contact with that person and not expect our mentor to drive the relationship. We want to assess the academic professional strengths, learning and development needs, values and short and long term goals. Now, a mentor is going to ask you these questions to make sure they know how to best help you. But you should think about, hey, where is it that I want to go? 
it's really quick, you know, and easy to say, hey, I want to be mentored. But if we're not clear as a mentee where we're going, we're not really giving that mentor a lot to work with to be able to help us to move forward. And we're not necessarily using their time um, the best that we could, right? We want to direct them and be very forward with them, which uh, to describe what where we want to go and what we want to do. Uh, develop a plan with a mentor for achieving these goals. So I love this. Again, I'm on both sides of this. But if I'm looking at someone that I want to help me to achieve something, I really need to communicate to them what my goals are so they best know how to help me to get where I'm saying I want to go. Follow through on commitments and goals. You know, mentors are really busy people. They're very successful in most cases. And so when we are in that position, we want to um, respond to them in a positive way and say, so if they give me an assignment to read a chapter in a John Maxwell or whatever that might be, and if I come back to them and I have not done that, I'm not, I'm not showing them that I'm serious about it. I'm not showing them that I am going to follow through through with the information that they are sharing with me. So it's really important that we follow through on our commitments. If we say that we're going to have a meeting at 10 a.m. Uh, on Friday, let's not show up at 10.05. Let's show up at 9.59 and be ready when they hop on that call. We want to respect the mentor's time, which is being on time, not using a bunch of the time for chit chat maybe, but just realizing that they are actually giving me time out of their day. And I want to be respectful of that. Maintain confidentiality at all times. A true mentor is going to share things with you that they wouldn't share with other people. So it's not something that we want to post on social media, right? So if I've, I've got a mentor uh, that, that maybe is famous and they're taking time with me, um, probably the last thing they want to see on social media is me just exposing, look at me, I'm with this person, right? It's like something that is, you, you have to understand that there is a sacred part of that. There's an appropriateness and you don't need to just like show that you're in because you're with a famous person. All right. I think that's really important actually. Um, openly share successes and failures. This uh, mentor is not looking for you to be perfect. A matter of fact, if you try to show yourself as being perfect, they're going to see through that. So be really open so they can help you. Hey, this is what went right. This is what didn't go right. And just look for um, some honesty and openness to, to allow them to help you in the place that you're at. And uh, be receptive to feedback and coaching. That's really important. Don't bristle every time someone tries to correct you or gives you something you might not be comfortable with. And then take advantage of opportunities that are presented by the mentor. So let me give you an example of that. If you are talking to a potential mentor or a mentor and they say, hey, you know what? If you want to learn about this, reach out to me and let's schedule a meeting and I'll share this with you. Well, if you don't follow through and actually respond to them or take advantage of that, they are seeing that as I've given you an opportunity, you have not taken advantage of it. And they they potentially or most likely would make a decision that you are not really ready for mentorship because you did not follow through or take advantage of the opportunity that they presented. All right, here's some scriptures that I think helps us in this area of mentorship. Give instruction to a wise man and he will still he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man and he will increase in learning. So this is like part of being wise is being humble and understanding that you don't know everything and that you really could glean some information or wisdom from people. Proverbs 13, 20 says, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. I think that's really interesting too. So don't choose a mentor that is at a place you don't wanna go. So um, I would just say like, 
you know, for women, we don't want to be mentored by someone maybe that's got like multiple broken relationships, doesn't have relationship with their children, you know, their, their life basically is not where we want to go. That is not a mentor that we want to connect with. They might have it all in one area of maybe making money or climbing the corporate ladder. But when we look at what's important to us from a holistic perspective, we want to make sure that we are connecting ourselves with people that actually are, they're, they're presenting a life that we want to have. And then 1 Corinthians 11, 1, this is so cool because if we say, oh, Karen, I don't know who a mentor could be. You always have Jesus, right? And this is what this says. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. So this is really that position of a mentor where we say, you know what? I want you to listen to what I say, but measure everything by what God says we should do or what Jesus holds as a standard. And that helps us to be accountable and it helps you as someone that wants to be mentored to be able to choose people that are living that life. I love this. You know, Billy and Becky truly are like my greatest uh, mentors. And Billy says this, the teacher shows up when the student is ready. There is so much in that. You know, when you and I are ready to be mentored, when we're ready to learn, when we are ready to um, hear some things, when we're ready to grow, it's amazing how that teacher shows up. But when we are closed off, we might not even know it. We, we are just not maybe open to somebody giving us feedback. Um, that And we're saying, where is that mentor? And if you're in that position where you're saying, Karen, where's that mentor? I want to be mentored, but there's no one around me. I would just ask you to maybe ask the question of yourself, like, am I ready for that? Am I ready to be mentored? Because if I'm not, the teacher definitely is not going to show up because I'm not ready. And maybe even ask the Lord, like, what can I do to be prepared to be mentored? What can I do to put myself in a position to attract a mentor that is going to help me to go where God has called me to go? All right, here's another quote. Um, to mentor someone, the mentee must accept that the mentor will offend their mind, okay? The question is, how will they react? And again, this is from Billy uh, and Becky, who are my mentors. Um, one of the things that Billy says is like, hey, you know what? I'm going to offend your mind, and what he means by that is we're going to hear things that are just like, what? It's not the way we think. Or maybe it's a way we don't want to look at a perspective. But a mentor, if they offend your mind, okay, how are you going to react? Are you going to be an offense? Are you going to be bitter? Are you going to be angry because you, they didn't say what you wanted them to say? And that's a way for you as a mentor to sort of vet where you want to sow your time into. Uh, and I think we have a responsibility as mentors to really hear from God who we're supposed to pour into because there's the pearls before swine, right? And I don't, I'm not calling anybody a pig or anything like that, but I'm just saying that there's a principle there that you have, you are valuable. You have only a certain amount of time. So you want to show that time and expertise into somebody that will listen, right? And that will not get offended by what you're trying to tell them that will actually help them. In other words, Billy calls it this, a mentor pokes the bear and then they watch how the mentee responds. So just looking back on my life, there's many times that, you know, I've been the bear and I've been poked and I did not respond right. So really what that was saying is that I wasn't ready to hear a different perspective, right? So one of the things that even Dave and I talk about, and we'll even say like, wow, I think our, I think we're being poked, right? We're that bear being poked. How are we responding? I never want to be that person that is just like a bunch of emotional baggage for someone. And I would encourage you that too. And I'm just being very, you know, candid with you. 
But if you are a person that's full of talent, but every time somebody tries to impart something to you, you're just like an emotional basket case, that is not good seed for somebody to sow into. And actually, when 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 I see someone like that, that's just going to like, wow, blow up every time I try to say something to them or get offended or, you know, um, don't like something I say, you know, once they're stirring up trouble over here, that is not a person I want to spend time imparting information to. Because if I don't say what they want to hear, I know that they're going to reject it right? So if we look at that from a mentee perspective, let's be that person that is not the high maintenance person. Let's be the person on the team or someone that a mentor looks at that is not going to emotionally drain someone. So if something is maybe I'm not being, you know, communicated to at a frequency that I would like, maybe there's a lot of meetings that are continually being canceled. Maybe it's a situation where someone's making decisions that are in my realm of responsibility and they're not communicating directly to me. I find out from another party. Those are not ideal situations, but they are situations where you and I can look at it and say, wow, am I being emotionally strong here? Am I allowing those things to bother me? Or can I kind of roll with the punches, not get offended? And in that, we actually get ourselves in a position to be much better like ground for a, a quality mentor to sow into. So I think that's really important that we don't become a drain on our mentors, but maybe we speak life to them or we have the capacity that we're actually like, hey, they're safe. I can deal with all these problems over here, but I know that Karen's always going to be fine, right? She's not going to freak out on me. She's not going to make demands on me. I want to be that person. And I'm not always saying that it's easy, but I think it's always important. All right. The next one here is, are you ready to be mentored? To think you know everything is an indication you are not teachable. Remember the story I shared with you at the beginning? I want. I knew everything. I was always right. And if there was someone that was trying to show that I might be wrong in my insecurity, I was going to outnumber you as far as arguments and prove myself to be right. That is not someone that is teachable. Humility and the ability to say, you know what? I don't know everything and I'm willing to listen. A good mentor will not waste their time on someone that is unteachable. If uh, the, I heard the funniest story, um, and this was like really with, with my mentor, one of my mentors, Becky, Billy and Becky, but someone came up to Becky and they asked advice, right? And, and Becky gave their advice, which is really amazing. Like she's always got great advice, but then the person um, was kind of like, you know, no, I don't agree with that. And kind of went back to really what they were saying is I want you to agree with what I'm saying, not really get my input. And um, Becky said something in that situation that um, that uh, that really was like, hey, if you didn't want my input, right, why did you ask me? And that's the thing with mentors. Like if you're in a situation where you only want to hear what someone says that agrees with you, right? You're not ready to be mentored because a mentor is going to be able to come in and be able to give you a contrary uh, viewpoint on something that you will be willing to hear. And then if you are merely looking for someone to agree with your decisions, you're not looking for a mentor. While all those things are like, oh my gosh, that kind of like hurts a little bit. But these are really good truths that is going to allow you and I to get to that next level much faster than if we didn't have a mentor. OK, so let's look at this slide is establishing a generational mindset in going forward in our thinking. There are four generations that I want to share with you briefly here, and then we're going to take time with questions and answers. So if you've got a question, I'm going to do my best to answer those. Go ahead and enter that question into the chat section. Um, or if you're on Instagram or on Facebook, go ahead and enter your question in the comment section. And we're going to be able to um, answer as many of those as possible. But let's look at this. 
So we've got Abraham, who is over 60. So listen to this. It's influence. It helps others to grow and develop in their stage of life, reputation, character, create an opportunity for generations and helping people move to success. You know, I'm going to be 60 next year and I'm moving right into this. And you know what? Can I tell you? I've lived through some things, okay? I have some experience that if someone is like, hey, I want to learn and I want to hear about your experience, I really feel like I can help them, okay? So if you've got people in your life that are in that age group, maybe it's your parents, maybe it's your grandparents, I would encourage you to listen and to be open that they actually might have something to say that would be helpful to you. But when you look at that, you have to realize that you have to step out of thinking you know everything, right? This is like the sages. These are people that have been around. And personally, um, when I look at my mentors, they are all in this age group. They are sages. They are Abrahams. Um, but let me give you another perspective. Well, we've got the Isaacs that are between 40 years old and 60 years old. This is impact. These are, they've got financial strength. They're in their earning years. And basically they are applying what they have learned along the way to really have an impact. Jacob 20 to 40, that is the generation of increase. So if you're in that age group, you're looking at your skills, your abilities, your wisdom, your humility, your finances, and you are increasing. But to really hit that level, you want to have those Abrahams. You want to have those Isaacs that are speaking into your life to help you. You know, we've got um, Carly and Levi are in this age group, the 20 to 40. They're in the increase age group. And um, maybe... You know, if we look at age, we're definitely their mentors. But you know what? I learned from them, too. So it goes both ways. And then we've got the Joseph generation that is zero to 20. And this is our identity group. This is knowing God and who they are in God, who who people are as a person, calling in the purpose of God in their life, family. David's example is um, a great example when he had, you know, the killing the bears the, you know, taking care of the sheep and all of that, when he was actually stepping into with the armor, he was in the Joseph generation. God spoke the promises to him in that Joseph time, but identity is so important. Now, it doesn't take much for us to realize that in this day, identity is a real issue for people. But you and I, when we step into that place of being a mentor, we can help establish people's identity in who God has called them to be, whether it be gender, whether it just be purpose, whatever that is, we have a big part to play. And if we know that from zero to 20, their main objective is to understand their identity, we can actually step into that mentorship to help them in that area. All right. So here's some ways, again, to receive mentorship. We can sit at the dinner table or conversation circles with multiple ages. Um, I learned so much sitting around the table with my parents, my grandparents, my cousins, just being a part of it. So I want to encourage you, like if you have young people, get them at the table with you. You don't need to have the adults here, the kids over here. Have them at the table and they will glean things from you that are really powerful. If you want to learn, just see what you can do to sit at the table. Don't, don't feel like you have to, you know, have a voice in it. Just listen. Just be part of the conversation and so much can be imparted to you. You want to listen to podcasts and teachings. I shared that. Dave and I have been listening to Kenneth Hagin Sr. Uh, lately, like all the time when we work out and everything. And it's just like, wow, we're being mentored by Kenneth Hagin Sr., even though he has been with the Lord uh, for 20 years, right? But we can still be mentored by him. Assist someone who knows the things you want to learn. Look for opportunities that you can assist people and, um, you know, help them, serve them. 
And in that, you will pick up things in that serving that will definitely help you. Read books from authors who you want to learn from that's really positive. Engage in formal apprentice and mentorship programs. They are absolutely available for you. You don't have to go the formal route, but if you have the opportunity to, the information I provided for you tonight will really help you to take advantage of that. And then join masterclass calls or webinars, just like you're doing tonight with Level Up Ladies. That's ways we can connect with each other and we can receive mentorship. All right. So um, I want to just encourage you that you have got an opportunity here, too, if you want to build your business, if you want to start your business, if you want to take what God has given you and move it on a fast track, we've got a very special offer for you. It is called Fast Track Your Business Ideas. This is a teaching that I put together, and it's usually $49, and I'm giving it to you tonight for just $39. So you want to go ahead and um, take advantage of that if you want to move to that next level. Right here, I've got all the different tracks. It's going to really help you to move forward in your walk with God and really achieving the destiny and the purpose that God has for your life. All right. Well, I just want to thank all of you for being a part of this tonight. I really appreciate you. Uh, just a reminder that if you subscribe to Level Up Ladies, we're going to send you a recording of this teaching along with the PowerPoint so that it'll show up in your email. If you're watching on Instagram or Facebook, you can go to karenconrad.net forward slash L-U-L and take advantage of this offer. All right. Well, God bless you and have an amazing night. Thanks again for joining me. Um, we just wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. God bless.